Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Today, I was asked a question in my Discord a, a few hours earlier. Uh, a question saying, for a video idea, when did King's Isle become Crown's Isle? And I thought that this was a really good idea actually. I, I was like, this is an interesting idea for me. So what I did, like the nerd I am, was I mapped everything out and I kind of looked at the data. And I'm going to show you the data, I'm going to go over it so we can see it together. So, we'll look at this right here. So what this is, is this is a nice thing on a handy dandy website uh, that's just making a timeline. And basically what I did was I put, as you can see here, every single Horde and Lore pack on a timeline up until the modern day. Now, uh, I think I forgot, okay, I forgot the, uh, the new pack. What's the new pack called? Wait, let me look at it. I forgot the Ravenwind Ragers lore pack, uh, but that would have come out right here. But otherwise, it should be mapping everything out. So uh, another thing is I can click on these and I gave each of them a description of what they're most known for. So we're going to go into them and notice a few trends. So let's get started. So first off, the Dragon's Horde pack was the first pack ever released. It had the Bone Dragon now, but it didn't have a gear too good. The Weaver's Horde had the best energy gear for a long time on this uh, pack list. No pack was better. Nightmare Pack had a sick mount, some gear stitches. Raven's Horde had crit on low level gear. Heron's Horde had no real outstanding things. Ninja's Lore had no real outstanding thing. Uh, the Horde of the Hydra Pack had the first three person mount. The Knight's Lore Pack had Deer Knight. Phoenix Horde Pack had no specific thing. Keeper's Lore Pack had Jade Gear, so that was pretty big. The Yuletide Pack is just bad, it didn't really have anything in it. Skyvern's Horde Pack, only real good thing was a Life Wand that had 20% outgoing healing. Uh, Shaman's Lore, nothing. Uh, Pharaoh's Horde Pack had a Slavery Mount, which was pretty on Pog. Uh, yeah, so there's that. I think the Winter Wonderland Pack also did. And then the Islander Horde Pack. So these are all of the early game packs that were released. These are the packs I remember back in the day when I was a kid. I would like to say that nothing here is too broken. I would say the best gear in any of these packs is the Jade Gear, which has a lot of resist. So realistically, none of these packs are particularly necessary. Another good one was the Knight's Lore Pack for Deer Knight, but realistically, um, that isn't too necessary uh for a death because they can just craft it now they kind of took a little bit of a break in early 2014 i don't really know why uh, i wasn't able to find why i looked up i kept looking up packs to see if i was missing anything but i could not see anything i was missing so if there is something i'm missing for some reason let me know but as far as i can tell they didn't make a single pack for almost a year they had the islanders horde pack which had really nothing in it and then they waited until the harrowing nightmare pack in 2014 the harrowing nightmare pack was kind of crazy because it's out of the pack came the best crit ones in the game and they are still the best crit ones in the game despite it coming out six years ago which i find kind of funny uh next was the winterland pack which had pip jewels and skeleton keys which was pretty good at the time uh terror's horde pack had the best wand at the time it had um wands that gave damage and then it also had wands that uh the wands also gave pierce and i think power pip at a level below 100. the witch's horde bundle had the fr uh that's just the first state mount i'd like to say it's the first stat mount i just probably finger mashed it the road warriors horde pack had decent wands and then the first mount above 40 percent speed now um i like to say uh i would i would you can kind of see it's starting to take a turn and it is going to, it's going to continue taking a turn. So let's continue looking at it. Immortals lore pack didn't really have anything in it. Gloomthorn nightmare pack had a headless horseman, which a Wonderland pack had energy gear and reindeer knight. It also had another slavery mount, which was pretty on pog king style. The Golster's horde pack had mounts with damage, which was kind of crazy. The professor's horde pack had disgustingly good boots. Like no matter what level you were, they were better than what you were wearing. And it also had Mass Faint on the hat. Wisteria Lore Pack had Pigsy. Alpha Horde Pack didn't really have anything in it. Unicorn Horde Pack didn't really have anything in it. Decaversary Horde Pack had good wands in it. Elven Nightmare had energy gear. Yuletide Gingerbread had some energy gear. Nimbari Horde Pack, uh, I didn't write anything, but I'm pretty sure it didn't have anything in it. From what I've seen, it didn't have anything in it. Pandemonium Horde Pack had a really good wands and the Panda Mount, which I obviously use on my fire. If, if you look here, I'm still using it on my fire. An amazing mount. 
Guzelheim Lord Pack had Ratsfin. Sinbad Horde Pack had arguably the best ones in the game still up until this day, unless you're Fire Storm. Pirate Nightmare Pack had some sick looking gear. Yuletide Logger Pack has good energy gear. Druid Horde Pack didn't have anything as far as I see. Uh, Safari Horde Pack had some decent gear. Doomsday Croc Horde Pack drops a Gauntlet. Celestian Spell Elemental Pack drops Ship of Fools. Primeval Horde Pack has insane Storm and Fire gear. If you match them, obviously they give you the set bonus. I mean, it's pretty good for Life and Myth as well. But I'd say specifically Storm and Fire got the best deal in regards to the Primeval Horde Pack. You have the Yuletide Mornings Pack, which came out nine months ago. Pretty good energy gear. Um, great Sky Train Robbery Pack. Gauntlet, but had some lackluster gear. And then Caramel Souvenirs gear was just generally bad from what I understand. Now, I could be a little bit wrong, but I think this is it. Now, this wasn't, the original video wasn't to list what every pack did. I just did that for the sake of simplicity and in your mind knowing what I know about each of them. I don't know everything about every pack. These could have some things missing, but as far as I know, this is it. So, um, let's go over some things. So, the original question I was asking in this video was when did King Zile become Crown Zile? Now, let me define what Crown Zile is in my eyes. When did King Zile go from making it so that pack gear was largely an aesthetic thing, largely a thing that was optional, not too good, but has some decent stats, to pack gear had the best stats in the game? When did that happen? Because that's when, in my opinion, the game goes from pay to play to pay to win, when the stats have the best gear. Now, personally, I don't actually mind. I don't need to have the best gear, especially with the damage cap. It's not necessary for me. But for some people, it's really, really important. And for PvP, it's really important. The Gulzer's Horde Pack, I would say, four years, eight months ago, was the turning point for packs. Now, why do I say that? First off, it had mounts with damage. This is crazy. Because getting an extra 3% damage from paying for the game is kind of crazy, I'd say. So, I would say that that is one thing. But, every pack after the Gulcher's Horde pack stopped doing their original policy. Where gear was either a good stitch, or had some decent stats but not the best, to packs have the best gear in the game. Now, you can especially see this with Professor's Horde pack. If you don't know, Professor's Horde Pack is probably, in my opinion, the best pack in the entire game. The boots that you get from this pack are literally the best boots for any level, probably up until Dragoon Gear. And Dragoon Gear is just for the set bonus. I mean, if you looked at it, um, especially back when it first came out, the crit update was different. And crit was much better than block at the time. And these boots gave crit rather than block, so they became better than the Darkmoor boots instantly. They had Power Pip as well, which most of the Darkmoor boots didn't have, which gave an extra bonus, which made these a bit crazy. And then, above all, there's Mass Faint on the Death Hat, which is really crazy and made PvE, like, just, it changed the entire landscape of it. So this pack, ultimately, I think is the most crazy one. But I marked the turning point specifically with the Golger Sword Pack. Now, obviously, you have these packs in here, which don't really do anything, I would say. But there's some more packs up here that are definitely more, not necessarily pay to win, but definitely in that area. They're, they're much more... The, the problem is that they're much better than the early packs. And the reason why they're better than the early packs is because they give gear that's legitimately good. The Pandemonium Horde pack has actually really good wands. The wands have... Uh, insane amount of damage, and they're some of the highest damaging ones in the game. Grizzleheim Lore Pack uh, released Ratspin, which realistically isn't too bad, I would say, honestly, because this is similar to Knight's Lore Pack. You can craft it as well. I would just say that Ratspin's recipe is on a Ratspin's re recipe is like double the difficulty of Deer Knight, and I would say that it shouldn't be the case. I'd say they should be about the same. Uh, the Sinbad Horde Pack has some of the best wands in the game. I still use this, uh, no, not on my fire. I still use this wand on most of my wizards, like on my death, um, because it gives good damage, decent crit, and it gives pierce, which is all things I think are pretty important for a wand. Then you have stuff over here that has like really good energy gear, some of the best energy gear in the game. Safari Horde Pack had some decent gear as well, uh, that gave quite a bit of damage that contended for stuff like the Dragoon gear and stuff. Which, in my opinion, packs should not contend for. 
the Dragoon gear. They shouldn't contend for that main gear. They should just be a decent replacement, but not better. Which, I mean, I guess you could say it kind of is, but I would still say it's a bit too close for comfort. Uh, these next packs, in my opinion, are some of the most disgusting and egregious of, like, pay, paying to have better stats in the game. Uh, Celestial Spellamental Pack, which isn't really paying to have better stats, but it is paying for Ship of Fools, which is, without a doubt, the best 4-pip AoE in the entire game. Like, it is hands down. Anyone who argues that, they either don't understand the game, or they don't, they're just, they're just dumb. It's one of the two. Because Ship of Fools is crazy. The idea of you healing 4,000 health first round on uh, any PvE fight is crazy for a death. Like, that is insane. I can't stress that enough. And Ship of Fools is undoubtedly one of the best spells in the game. Primeval Horde is the most egregious, I would say, out of any of these for Crown's Isle and King's Isle becoming a little bit uh, money-grubbing. And I would say this because look at it. I mean, the not only is like the wand one of the best in the game, and you can see on my fire it is, but it also gives a crazy set bonus. Fire, if they get two pieces of the gear, which that's an extra eight damage. So if I got the mount right now, that would be an extra eight damage on top of my uh, damage. You can see I already have 175. Without the damage cap, I'd be at 175. With that extra eight, I would be up to 183. And I'm a casual player, I like to say. This gear is not the best in the game. You can probably get up to 190 something with this gear. Like, I can't stress enough, I don't even have the full Dragoon gear. Like, I don't even have the full Dragoon gear, I just have Vanguard boots. If I had the Dragoon amulet and the Dragoon boots, I would have like an extra 10, 8 to 10 damage. And my damage would be naturally like in the 170s right now. I can't, I can't stress how, how, uh, how crazy that is to me. And I think that this is undoubtedly one of the most egregious packs in the entire game, and the rest are kind of shitty. Now, there is another aspect to this. I went over how useful each item is and when it became kind of more pay to win, but I would like to go over when did they start releasing packs at a rapid rate, because this is another thing they're talking about, is how many packs they've been releasing. Sorry, a penguin's walking past me. It's very, very loud. All right. When did they start releasing packs at a rapid rate? Well, realistically, they started back in about 2018, I would say. You can see in 2018, they released one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, they released five packs. And then in 2019, they released one, two, three, four, five, six. 2020, they released one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this year they've released a, a few as well i think they've released four or so this year and uh undoubtedly they're going to release another two or so with the halloween packs i would say ultimately 2018 is where things started changing and i think this is this is true both for uh changing in regard to i mean pay to win is more 2017 but 2018 is when it started being released frequently now i would like to say packs were released pretty frequently back in the day too but the difference is is that they weren't shoved down your throat and they weren't objectively better to buy so if you're looking for when did they start releasing packs frequently and packs that seemed to pay to win it wasn't around 2018 which isn't necessarily surprising all that much now i would like to say and this is something I bring up a lot, is that this is not necessarily Gamigo's fault. Now, obviously, I'm not going to support Gamigo. I don't support big corporations. I never have. But, and this is a hefty but, we cannot blame Gamigo for the packs being released right now. And I think that that's incredibly funny. Um, people seem to be like, ah, Gamigo's ruining the game. They're releasing all these packs. Well, no, they're not. Uh, King's Isle's been doing that for years. I hate to break it to you, but the data's right here. King's Isle's been doing that for years, and they're gonna keep doing that for years. It was their pack policy prior to Gamigo, and it's going to be their pack policy now. So, that's really it. I think that this was a pretty good video. Pretty good in regard to showing the analysis. Again, if one of you can figure out if I missed something here or whatever, but there's just this strange gap of time that they had, and I don't really understand it, but... Yeah, let me know uh, what you think about it. 
Do you think that the status fair? Do you agree with me for the turning point? I think of what I said was pretty fair. And about, as you can see here, four years ago is when uh, things started going a little bit downhill, which I think most people would agree with. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.